Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. Well, I grew in the last days, very lost times, which also means difficult, dangerous. When you look at the rate of kidnappings, then you know we're in dangerous times, right? Um, it's not peculiar to Nigeria, though there's a peculiarity about Nigeria's own, but it's not peculiar to Nigeria. All over the world, it's one calamity after the other. One crisis after the other. One problem after the other. So, when the last days were in perilous times, dangerous times, it also means the difficult times. It also means the wisdom of men will be failing. Is the time wisdom of men are failing. It also means that um, security will begin to fail, which we are seeing. It means there will be a letdown of a void. That means that people will not be fulfilled. The greatest, actually, you see all these terrorists, they are not fulfilled. They are not fulfilled. They're trying to find God. They can't find God. And so, they're resorting to believing that in their quest to cleanse the land of what they believe to be right and wrong, they can find God. But what they're finding is Satan. So, there is a void People commit suicide because there's a void in their soul that drives them in that own fulfillment. And so many people have voids, but some, why they've not been thinking of suicide is because they are finding hope to sorting the void. But those that have no hope, no means to answer the void, and no means to address it, some are driven to extinction of suicide. That's why you should keep praying for people. Oh, Jesus. And asking God to reveal himself to people. Amen? Amen. It means confusion. It means wastage. Dilemma. That's what perilous times is. Dilemma. People are in dilemma. They don't know where to turn to, whether right or left. They don't know what to do. They're in a state of chaos. It means emptiness. That's a dangerous state a man can be, to be empty. Very dangerous. Amen? Amen. One of the answers that the Lord gave in Luke 21... Maybe we should look at Luke 21, which we want to look at today. A very simple, very basic address of the situation people are in is praying in the spirit. Praying in other tongues. Luke 21 i read verse from verse 34 to 36. Take it to yourself. Let at any time your hearts be overcharged with suffocating, drunkenness, and cares of this life. So you must make sure at no time you're overwhelmed with the crisis you are facing. You must not be. It's a command. It says, take heed. Make conscious effort to 
make sure that you're yet to pay house rent, the landlord is coming, everything is coming. He said, don't give in to that pressure. Don't allow it to overwhelm you. He said, if you don't, you are saved from the times we are in. Verse 35. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Remember in Revelation 3.10, he said, I will protect you from the hour of temptation that will come upon the earth to try it. But for him to protect you, it must not overwhelm you. If it overwhelms you, he will not be able to protect you. That's why he said, casting all your cares upon God for what he careth for you. So the Lord is giving us insights into what we're making step in. In that very dangerous situation. Say, you must not be overwhelmed. No matter what. If heaven is collapsing, don't be overwhelmed. And one of the ways I tell people to handle that is that just keep saying, it's not going to be forever. I'm coming out of this. And I'm coming like, like gold tried in the fire. That means you take a clue from Abraham. He considered not what will overwhelm him. Say his organs are dead. Say that womb is dead. This one is dead. Oh God, it will overwhelm that man. Let nothing move you. Let nothing move you. Nothing. Let nothing startle you. Let nothing mesmerize you. I'm trying to find the right words. Let nothing shake you. One of the policies I have, every crisis has a lifespan. Paul said it has a beginning and an end. The worst comes to the worst. If I don't know what to do and it remains, it will expire. Like the man at the pool of Bethesda, it expired. He never asked for forgiveness because Jesus said, sin no more. That means he sins. Those things expired. And the day it expires, the Lord is mandated to show up. Say, so take up your bed and walk. It has expired. Get out of here. That's the worst. That's the very what? Worst. But we're not going to wait for it to expire. If the times can be shortened, then the times of crisis can also be shortened. He said it in Matthew 10. He said, of those days shall be shortened for the elect's sake. So we can still shorten it, though it has an expiry date. And we'll shorten everything. Amen. But we'll lengthen the time you are to enjoy it. Oh, yeah. Amen. Say, so what am I like? He said, at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. forevermore. That one, they didn't put time limit. They say, for what? Forevermore. The pleasures are for what? Forevermore. Psalm 19. This is Psalm 19 or Psalm 16. Sorry, Psalm 16. For what? Forever. Say, so your light of future, which are but for a moment. He said, his pleasures are for what? Ever. They have no lifespan. We're looking at a very simple topic. Very, very simple. Then verse 36. Oh, sorry, verse 35. For a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So you are to pray always. How do you pray always? So that you can escape. They said um, the Fulan headsmen have surrounded, every, that's the report. I, I'm reading newspapers. I don't have any intelligence report, except the one the Holy Spirit reveals to me, which is the super intelligence report. That one, the normal intelligence will take what they observe and hear and report. The super intelligence will tell us what you are thinking, and it will report. So, praise God. It will tell us what you are planning and thinking in your bedroom. He said, is there a conspirator in our midst? <laughs> 
that is telling us what we are discussing in our bedroom. Our bedroom. Who is telling? Who is telling these people among us? Is the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. The revealer of what secrets. So he said, "Watch, pray, <laughs> watch therefore, and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things." The prayer is to pray in the spirit, to pray in other tongues. There are but different kinds of prayers. But what the Lord is saying here, you have to pray in the spirit. Acts, the Bible says that when they were arrested, they went to their own company and lifted up their voice to God to pray. And they said, oh God, behold their threats and then stretch out your hand, to grant us boldness to preach your word, stretch out your hands to heal in the name of your holy son Jesus. And the Bible says they prayed. So they said those words, then they prayed. And the Bible says the place where they prayed shook. What does it mean to pray in other tongues? Now, let me encourage you. I, there's a friend of mine. He said, oh, God, I had a dream overnight. I said, what's the dream? He said, in that dream, a man appeared to me. He said, I had asked the Lord, how do I manage my time? He was a businessman. My time, my business, my work with God. He said, I've been praying for God to help me out to manage. He said, and a man appeared to me in a vision. And I pray businessmen will learn from this. It's not about running out of business all the time. He said, take four hours from your business schedule. He said, read the Bible. No, it's four hours. I'm trying to remember how he put it. He said, read a book, a Christian book, one hour a day. He said, read your Bible one hour a day. Good. Then he said, pray in tongues two hours a day. He said, take those four hours out. In one year, he did it. He paid a debt of over 300 million. Business is not running up and down looking for clients. No, you will run and look for clients. But it's God that will give you the enabling grace. He said, do this four hours and you will be successful. And he stood by it. He told me it was owing over 300 and something million. He paid it in one year. The next year, he built two houses on Banana Island. Just by taking two hours to study a day. Pray, no, no. One hour to study a day. One hour to read a Christian literature a day. Two hours to pray in tongues a day. Then, in whatever is left, he chases his business. Praise God. Jesus spent the first hours of his day praying. Paul said, I thank my God. I pray more than ye all. Eh? You know why Peter denied Jesus three times? Two things. One, he could have asked for help from the Lord. I said, Lord, help me not to deny you. The second option he had was to pray. And the only way to avoid it when Jesus said, watch with me and pray this one hour. What was he doing? Sleeping. Sleeping. So he slept three hours. That would have changed destiny and rewritten history. He took those three hours to sleep instead of to pray. And history was changed because of him. Because of three hours of not praying. Praise the Lord. Come on. I'm not saying something scary. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What does it mean to pray in the Spirit? It means to speak in other tongues. 1 Corinthians 14. This is what you need to do. 1 Corinthians 14, I read from verse 1. Follow after charity, desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not to men but to God. So it's a prayer. Say, watch and pray. When you pray, you're not talking to men, you're talking to God. So if you speak to God, then it's a prayer. All discussions with God is prayer. All discussion with men is talk, not prayer. There is no prayer with men. 
Prayer is only made to God. So any conversation with God is a prayer. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no man understandeth him, how be it? In the spirit, he is speaking mysteries. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Kayode Adeshoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Surulere Lagos. Get a copy today. He's speaking mysteries. You know, the Lord was teaching in Mark 4, said the kingdom of God is like unto a man that plants seed into the ground. And it should grow. How it grows, you do not know. How it grows, you do not know. However, when it begins to grow, you will see the blade, the air, and the stalk, then the fruit. When you will see the fruit, you put in the sickle. That's Mark 4, I think, 26. You put in the sickle to reap. How it grows is not given to you. It's the prerogative of the divine. So the, the how it grows is the mystery. You know what you want. You know what you are asking for. But you don't know how it will come. How it will come is the mystery. He that prays in an unknown tongue establishes the how with God on the face of the earth. He's establishing the how. You're saying, oh God. I need a godly, virtuous wife. Then as you are praying, okay, somebody say husband. I need a God-fearing, no, I'm, not, I'm not putting handsome. Everything God did was good. There's no ugly person. And Satan didn't create anyone. So there's no ugly person. So let's live handsome. Because I, I, I said, well, but I was corrected and I was told husband. husband. So, Amen. So, I need a husband who I can compliment to actualize your will and his purpose in his life. Yeah. That, that's instant answer. Instant. He said, I need a man that I'm lonely. God said, God said, it's not good for man to be alone. He did say it's not good for man to be lonely. You know, there's a difference between lonely and being alone. It's not the same. So, um, I need a man with whom I can join hands with the gifts and the virtues and the blessings you have given to me to establish your will and your purpose, both in his life and on the face of this earth. A man I can support and I can give a helping hand to, to cause your kingdom to advance on the face of this earth. Instantly, God brings him straight away. Straight away. It was not going to waste time. If it's not a time, they will shorten the time for that sake and quickly get him down. Praise God. Don't ask for a rich man because in purpose, there's wealth and riches. You know, Solomon said, give me a wise and an understanding heart. God said, in that thing you have asked for, there's wealth here. So I'm giving you riches, there's long life, there's health, there's security, there's everything there. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. What was I saying? I, I, I guess. All right. Now, the how. When you have asked God, that's why Paul said, I will pray in the spirit. I will pray in my understanding also. So the how is robust. Kalibo to Danika Raban Delekete. So what you are saying is, oh God, I know he is in Abuja. Let me go on that training so I can meet him. When we get there, delay my training so that he can meet up with this. Rekali is the how you are praying, which is the mystery, which you don't know. You are praying mysteries, which is the prerogative of the divine. They're taking you to the realm of the divine to know how it's going to be worked out. And if you're able to pray the understanding of the tongue, you will know exactly how everything will navigate. Amen. Amen. In verse 4, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. He that prophesieth edifieth the church. 
The word edified means to be built up, to be fortified, to be strengthened, to be energized. It's like your phone and the battery is on 1%. When you call, you find that the line is breaking. Or if you have a network that is on just one bar, when you're calling, you say, I can't hear you well. But when you have full service and a full battery power, you find that you can hear clearly. All right? You can communicate well. If you speak in tongues, you'll be able to hear God better because you're fully charged. You have a better signal. Am I communicating? Yes, sir. Verse 5. I would everyone spoke with tongues. That's the will of God. You should all speak in tongues. In the course of this service, we're all going to stand and speak in tongues. If you've never spoken in tongues, you're born again, you will speak in tongues. Not next week. Today. In this service. Now. You will speak in all the tongues. If you're not saved, you'll be saved. Then you speak in tongues. Because you all speak in tongues. He says, I pray that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is his will. And I pray that you all will speak in tongues today. In the name of Jesus. The advantage of the praying in tongues is that it's a secret that only God knows and Satan does not know. If God says, tomorrow at the meeting, preach and tell the congregation this. You are invited to a program. Tell the people this. Now it's up to the pastor to call you to allow you to speak. Now you can say, oh God, when I get to the meeting, touch the man of the heart of the pastor. Let him call me. Let him do it. Satan can still oppose that and make sure he doesn't call you. When I say, tomorrow, I'll speak at the meeting. La kuma kacha raba. Satan doesn't know how you're going to do it. Because you've established the how in the secret, which is not privy to. He cannot stop it. When you pray it in the understanding, he hears you, then he can stop it. When you pray in the spirit, he does not understand you, so he cannot stop. He takes it out of the realm of the kingdom of darkness. It's a mystery to them. It's not a mystery to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. What I'm trying to do, I'm trying to stir you up. So that from today, I want you speaking in tongues every day. I want to charge all of you. Try and speak in tongues an hour every day. It doesn't have to be continuous. It could be 10, 10 minutes scheduled into six times in a day. It could be 15 minutes scheduled into four times a day. It could be 30 minutes scheduled twice a day. Praise God. I remember once I was praying 18 hours a day. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't going anywhere. I wasn't going anywhere. For seven days, I just locked myself in the house. And I was praying 18 hours a day. On the seventh day, my goodness, that's when I had the visitation of the Lord. It's If I walk past you, I will know what you're thinking. I'll know the sin in your life. I know what you're doing. I'll know what you need to stop doing. I'll know what you need to do. Whether I knew you from anywhere or not, I just knew. And every human being was like as if I was watching a multiple screen. And they were just showing me. As I just walk past people, and I just pick it that this is what this man is fighting. And, this one, and I just see the screen, and I just see what he needs to do to make it in life. But I just walk past it took me to the realm of the divine. That's just one out of many. I find that in these last days, we don't have spiritual experiences. In the Bible, Ezekiel was dumb for days. The Bible says the power of God was upon him, the hand of God was upon him, and he couldn't speak. Sometimes, God just lays his hand on you, and you can't speak for a while. You are being anointed. Once I was praying, and as I prayed for a long time, I couldn't eat because my mouth was tasting salt. And I was saying, ah, I couldn't eat. If I tasted, I said, it's tasting salt. He said, have you eaten salt? I said, no. And I was putting water to wash my tongue, but the salt was not going. But after about the second and the third day, it was reducing. And I said, no, what was that? He said, I'm seasoning your tongue with salt. 
So you may know how you ought to answer every man that asks of thee. It's an anointing. They come in the place of prayer. I was greeting somebody a few days after. A lady. And I said, oh, good morning, man. And we hugged. As we hugged like this, you know, the peg. As I moved back, I wanted to speak. <sighs> oh, God. I felt like, like I need to wash my hands. I said, no, what was that? He said, that's a defiled human being. He said, that's why you're feeling that way. Well, as the prayers reduce, they reduce. Oh, goodness me. God wants a mighty church, an army, vicious, terrible. You need the gifts of the Spirit in these last days. You need to have a prayer. He said, praying always, continuous, praying. Praise Jesus. And I'll shake somebody and I'll feel as if I'm holding line on. And I say, what I said is light. He lacks faith. No substance in his life. Whoops. My, what is this? And I'll hold somebody and I say, whoop. I feel some weight. Say, that's substance. You're shaking. And on and on. And I would be meeting some people who would be laughing in the Holy Ghost. You, some of you have experienced it. You've been there. You've seen it before. And they will laugh. And they will laugh for days. And they will laugh. I said, Lord, why they laugh? It's one of four things happening in their lives. I said, Sarah, I said, God has made me to laugh. He said, one long awaited miracle has happened. Or, Psalm 126 said, you shall go swim with tears. You shall, he said, no, no, Psalm 126. He says, how does it start? There's a place of laugh. No, no, it starts with, um, let me start with verse 1, 126. It says, how does it start? Oh, Jesus. From the beginning, from verse 1. When Lord turned again, the captives of them were like those that dream. Then I was a mouth filled with laughter. Uh -huh. he, said, he said, yeah, my tongue with laughter. He said, that means God said, a captivity has changed in the life of that person. What held him captive is now captive under his feet. He said, it's either that's also happening. He said, one of these four is happening. So the Mary are doing good like medicine, or is getting healed of a disease or a sickness in his life. I said, What's the fourth one? He said, Psalm 2. He says, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves to rule and take counsel together against the Lord and his anointed, say, Let us break their bands asunder, cast away their cause from among us. He that sits in the heavens shall laugh. He said, That means that all those who gathered against you. They are being judged and destroyed. So it is one of those four things is happening in the life of that lady laughing. She was laughing for three days. She couldn't stop. Do you, have you seen that before? Three days. There are people here who saw it. Raise your hand if you were there and you saw it. There's nothing. We're not talking mystery. It happened. Laughing for days. And she would just go, <laughs> and continue. And then they will sleep. When they wake up, they continue to laugh. And laugh. Till after three days, it subsides. I believe you have been blessed by that message and I know your faith has been built up and I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it and I'll be expected to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.